Bears set for win despite defiant Harmer 50. Essex will start day three at Edgebaston in a tough position. They trail the hosts by 217, largely thanks to lower order fireworks from Michael Burgess. And the visitors were already one down at the start of the day after Brown's late dismissal. Tom Wesley and Sir Alistair Cook looked to be patient in their approach, but found themselves bogged down and under a bit of pressure. It told with the score on 29. Wesley caught behind off the bowling of Rhodes for 10. The introduction of Critchley saw the run rate increase, and Essex finally started to make some real headway. It was the former Derbyshire all-rounder that got them past 50 with a boundary off Miles, in for the injured Liam Norwell, withdrawn after a blow to the head. And there'd be a big blow to Essex's hopes too, with 10 minutes to go until lunch, former England captain Cook was out for 36, Hannon Dalby with the all-important wicket. With Dan Lawrence expected to sit out with a hamstring injury, Essex were effectively four down now. They headed into lunch at 74 for three and needed to find something to hold off the Bears' charge. Rossington was required to show some fight last time out against Somerset. Essex needed more of the same now. He and Critchley delivered, the score up past 100 under their watch. They were almost halfway to parity. Critchley was threatening to go to a 50, but would be denied by Hannon Dalby, the all-rounder bowled for 49. Wheater was Rossington's next partner, and the two batters found a bit of success, taking the deficit below 100. It was down to 74 when Wheater had to go. He skied one straight up in the air, pounced by Rhodes at the non-striker's end. Essex had to roll the dice. Lawrence emerged, but didn't look particularly comfortable at the crease. Rossington, though, was taking on the bulk of the responsibility and holding the Bears back for the time being. With four off Briggs, he went to 50 off 77 balls. Perhaps there was an escape route for Essex. Not if Briggs had anything to do with it. Rossington gone before the end of the over, out caught behind for 52. Lawrence was the last recognised batsman still there and did what he could. Parity now within touching distance. He remained through to the break, the score up to 190 for six, the visitors now just 27 behind. It proved to be a crucial partnership, Harmer and Lawrence defying the odds and their hosts to put on 50 runs off 125 balls together. Their deficit became a slender lead, the earlier carnage dismissed, Harmer into the 40s now. The resistance was broken by miles, Lawrence out six short of a 50, caught behind. Harmer though didn't look back. Six runs whipped over the offside boundary took him to 50 runs. Not that you'd know it from his reaction. Snater announced his arrival by heaving Brooks away for six, and once again Warwickshire were denied by the latest Essex pairing. His cameo was eye-catching, but brought to an end by Miles. Brooks with the catch, Essex down to their last two wickets, and their lead just 73 at the close of play. For the moment, the hosts will be confident with the target still in double figures, but scoreboard pressure is a funny thing. The further they allow Essex to take that beyond three figures, the nervier this match will get.